Hi, I'm back here again in Google Sheets talking about my Google Sheets CRM system and in this video I'm going to be covering the main client list sheet as well as the client sheet template which really function as the backbone of the entire project. It's one of the central parts of the sheet that make it all work and the primary reason for building a CRM system which is tracking all of our client data and interactions and building custom data sheets for each of them. So on this primary client list sheet, I have a very similar format to what you've seen in the other sheets. I have the top six rows frozen, a similar color scheme going on, and I have a couple of extra buttons up the top, which you might not have seen, but their functionality is pretty straightforward, and I'll work through them one at a time. In the main body of the sheet, I have all of my different customers, and I have a column for all of the various data. You might like to modify this to include more uh, primary data as your situation dictates, but this I think is uh, the most important things that we need to know at a glance about a particular customer. There is a field here for ID number, which you may or may not use. Um, I like to have a unique ID number for each customer, but it's certainly not essential. You may, for example, like to provide a custom ID number which relates to some aspect of their business, or it might be something that you've made up on the fly and you're adding to iteratively. For now, I'll leave this column blank because you really do have the freedom to do what you like here. I have the address split up into two columns. Um, you might like to do different things with different parts of the address, or you might like to structure it differently so that you have, for example, the street address separated from the suburb and the postcode and, and so on. I have a field for email address. At some point this might be used to email invoices directly to clients or you might use that as uh, a primary contact for some kind of uh, ticketing style system where each interaction is logged and uh, sent to the customer however you end up using it. We have a primary contact, the person that we most often interact with at that customer and we have a phone number. We also have a column for paid up, which essentially lets us know if there are any outstanding invoices for these customers. Since I don't have any invoices or even an invoice sheet, we don't have any data in those fields, but we'll cover that in a later video. The next sheet along is the client sheet template, which we've structured similar to what I've displayed in other videos. And this effectively holds all of the important data about a particular client, um, anything that you might need to record about them and it also has a log uh, for every call um, that you receive from that customer and every interaction that you have with them. However, unlike in my previous system, we've also got a panel over here for invoicing, uh, which is fairly complicated. It has a, a, a quite a complicated array formula in this column here, uh, and I did make a whole video covering just how this formula works and what it does, uh, so I'll link that to the description and I won't go through it again in this video um, as it really is a subject uh, for a video of its own. The data fields in red here are actually looking up data from my client list. So it's pulling in all of this primary data which changes as you change the data on this sheet here. Uh, the rest of the fields in the blue, the gray and the green are up to you to modify as you please and you can house whatever kind of data is important to you in these fields. Uh, very important that you keep the client sheet template uh, clean and that you set this initial one up as you uh, want most of the client sheets to turn out. Um, you will be able to modify each of them individually, but having this set up 90% of the way is going to save you a lot of modification down the track. Um, so it's nice to have this clean and set up in about the way that you typically use it. Now you'll notice that I don't have any individual client data sheets for the two clients I have on my list here uh, and that's on purpose as I'm going to be demonstrating how we can uh, actually build the data sheets for these customers um, and we aren't going to be copying this ourselves as I've written a script which will iteratively work through the data on this primary sheet and build whatever sheets are needed. So I'll go ahead and run this script now and uh, you'll see that the sheets are created individually and populated with data and our focus is shifted to whichever sheet is most recently created.
So you can see, for example, on this data sheet, we have the name populated into this cell. And all of this data is effectively looking up this string over here on the main client list and then returning whatever the corresponding data is. So if I change something for this particular uh, client, you'll see that it's immediately changed over here as well. And if at a later time we come along and add new customers to that primary client list, we can generate individual sheets for them as well. Uh, without duplicating any of our existing sheets. So I've just added a couple of extra entries here. We'll run the script again and we'll have a look at what the result is. And there we go. We've still got our original two sheets here which have not been duplicated. And then we have extra sheets for the post office and sharp mining. And once again, I'll grab the last of my client data here, drop it into the client list here. We'll run the script once more and those last sheets will be created as well. So there you have it. That's a very uh, easy and simple way of building these relatively complex sheets. Uh, for each of your customers while you're only really starting with a single line of data um, which you could very well import from a CSV file or from an Excel file or an existing uh, spreadsheet that you're using. We also don't need to do anything special on the individual client data sheets to make our um, customer interaction form work properly. It'll simply copy over and work just like normal so that we can log calls and interactions without having to do anything on a sheet specific basis. The script will work just fine no matter which sheet you happen to be looking at. There we go, we have our customer interaction log. Coming back to the primary client list, we also have data validation at the top of the screen here where we can select any of the customers which are in our list and navigate directly to their sheet just by hitting the button next door. Now I'll take a quick look at the code that makes this sheet and the main client list work. So I have my script editor open here and we have a simple addition to our navigation script which is just this guy here. Uh, it's very very similar to all of the others here and you shouldn't have much trouble making sense of it. It's simply referring to a particular cell and then navigating if it can find one uh, to a sheet with that same name. In my add records script file I have an addition here called uh, function clear forms which does something similar to what we were doing up here in the previous videos with our expenses and our uh, logbook where first of all getting the active sheet whichever we happen to be looking at we're defining a few variables such as the the time and the tech who carried out the work uh, and dumping those into specific cells in this part of the sheet here. It's not 100% necessary, but I like to have it there. And a little bit further down, we're inserting a row after 20, just like we did with our uh, expenses sheet. And we're copying a pre-formatted row uh, down to that, so we have those merged cells. And then we're populating all of those cells in that row with the relevant data that we're pulling from the form. So all of this structure is going to be very similar to what we saw in the previous video where we have effectively our destination cells listed first and then our origin cells, the origin of our data, listed second here. The last three lines are simply clearing the form ready for more input. And then over here I have a brand new script file which contains my uh, clone sheets iter function. And this is the script which is attached to the button on the main client list, which is going to scan for and build all of my different client sheets. So that's this guy here. And we're doing a few different things in this sheet. We're first of all defining a bunch of variables up front. So we're referring to a particular sheet for 
the bulk of our starting data. That's my client list. We're defining a row where we're going to start looking at data, and that's row 7. We're using a built-in function called getLastRow to figure out what's the last row in that sheet, and that gives us a safe place to stop looking for data. Um, this actually refers to the last row that contains data. So if I take a look at my sheet here, get last row will actually return 13 um, because everything below it is blank and it doesn't actually count. You can have 10,000 rows here uh, and it's still only going to get whichever cells have data. Of course, if you have data down here and all of the intervening rows are empty, it's still going to get 42 as the last row containing data. So that's just something to keep in mind. We also have a data range variable here, which is defining the entire range that contains data that we're working with. And so we're looking at the variable start row, which is seven. And then the next argument that we're feeding to get range is one, which is our starting column. And in this context, one is always going to be uh, the first column. So that's this guy here. The next argument is the number of rows that we want to look at and that's defined by whichever row has the last data. And the last argument is the number of rows that we want to encompass in our data range. Uh, so we're looking at 15 different rows and keep in mind that that includes merged cells. So if you have um, five columns uh, of cells merged, that still counts as five columns. And then we're building a single variable which contains all of the values that are in that data range. On this row here, we're defining a maximum number of sheets to create. We don't want to create more than 200 sheets because Google Sheets doesn't like it when you do that. And you may even need to make this smaller depending on how much data you're transposing uh, because if your script runs for longer than five minutes, it will run into some kind of error and uh, eventually crash without actually completing what you've asked it to do. Then down here, we have a for loop which works through every row in the data that we've given it and does particular things based on what that data is. So first of all, we're making sure that we haven't gone over the iteration limit. We haven't created too many sheets. Then we're taking all of the data in that first row and creating a variable called row, which we can then index through. This if statement here checks to make sure that there is data in the first column. So that's this guy here. And this might be a little bit confusing uh, because up here we're looking at uh, columns by number and one is the first column. But down here, the first position, um, that is to say the first column of our data is actually position zero. So just keep in mind that depending on the context, you might be looking at zero or one for your data in the first column. If there is a value in column zero, then we're taking that and making it the name of the sheet. And then we're checking to see if that sheet exists by calling um, spreadsheet app uh, get sheet by name, and then whatever that name is. And quite handily, uh, get sheet by name will take you to a sheet if that particular name exists. But if it doesn't, it's just going to return null. And here we're using the check exist variable. Um, if this does not come back as null, then we completely skip over it because it means there's already a sheet there with that name. Down here, we're using copy to to make a copy of our client sheet template. And this is a uh, fixed name. So we need to make sure that whatever sheet we're copying has this name. And we use the flush method to make sure that anything that's up here that's waiting to be done is already done. So the script is going to carry out whatever actions are pending. Uh, my understanding is that some actions are bundled together and run all at once for efficiency. Uh, in some cases, we don't want that. So by using spreadsheet app flush, we're making sure that everything that's waiting to be done is already done, and then we can proceed with other stuff which might still depend on what came before it. And we define the copy of our client sheet template as a variable called new sheet, so that down here we can uh, take that variable and give it a name, which is obviously the company name, which is pulled from the first cell of the data that we're looking at. We're then setting that sheet as active, so we have it in focus, and we're populating the name field with the name of the company or the name of the sheet, which is effectively the same thing. There are perhaps better ways that you could carry out this process and create individual 
client sheets, uh, but this seems to work for me and it's what I've been using in most of my sheets without encountering any real issues with it. I expect there are some things that can be done a little bit better here, but um, for now it seems to work for me. One thing that I might change about this sheet is um, I may one day encode all of the uh, client sheet template um, into a script so that we don't actually have to keep an individual sheet um, and risk having it be deleted or changed or um, affected in some way that makes it difficult for us to recover from it. I feel like I may be able to generate this whole sheet on the fly, but that really is a project for another day. So for now, I'm going to work with a template sheet and this simple script, which iteratively creates new client sheets from that template. Okay, so that covers my primary client list, my client sheet template, uh, and a simple way to iteratively create new client sheets as you make them and skip over existing ones. In the next video, I'll be looking at invoicing and specifically how that relates to customers uh, with our invoicing panel over here and our uh, paid up column on the main client list. So I'll be showing you how I've created those, how they work, um, and what effect it has on the different uh, client sheets as we create invoices. But that's about it for this one. I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.